What will you do to unlock innovation? In today's fast-paced world, innovation might not be enough. Tomorrow's pioneers of change will need to be agile, able to adapt, and committed like never before. Your host, Santa Vending, invites you to listen in and join business leaders from around the world as they share their visions for success in our future business challenges. Welcome to Mind Innovation. I'm your host, Sana Vending. I'm always excited to learn. And in today's podcast, we're going to talk about strategy and leadership. I want to welcome Alex Bookman. He's a business strategist. He's a board advisor and an author. Uh, he coaches executives on designing and implementing business strategies with measurable impact and success. So uh, welcome, Alex. I'm really glad you're here today. Thank you very much for having me, Sana. Excited to be on your show. Yeah. So let's jump in, right? Um, so... I'm sure if you ask in a company, what is a strategy, you will get a lot of different answers. So um, that would be my first, you know, can, what is a strategy? You're absolutely right. I guess if you ask four people, you get five different answers. I wouldn't yeah. even go that far. <laughs> it's, it's very, very different what people perceive strategy to be. Um, it heavily depends on their, um, on their background, like academic background or, or um, let's say career background what they have come across in their lives, basically, um, how they would define strategy. And it heavily depends on the industry you're in. So if you talk to a marketing guy about strategy, they would always think marketing strategy. If you talk to um, someone who lives in the world of sports, the term strategy has a completely different connotation than if you talk to someone in the world of business. Um, what combines all of those definitions is that they basically tell you that their strategy is and then to do something. Yeah. And this is super important because strategy is actually doing. Strategy is not some weird theoretic idea that you have, right? Yeah. So if I would bottom line it, I would say a strategy is your plan to achieve a desired state in the future. Whether you are... Um, running a sports team, whether you're running a company, you need to have an idea of where you want to be in the future. That's often what's called a vision, a description of a desired state. Yeah. And your strategy is your way in order to get there, in order to move your company, your team, um, your business to that desired state. Okay. So to get there, I'm, sh I'm sure with, with companies, right? If they're saying, oh, we're designing and implementing um, and you're saying it's actually the doing, right? So it's, it's the implementing, executing it. Where do you see companies or organizations fail right now? What, what is it that you need or where is it that, what, is them, what are they missing? Some companies do a really great job when it comes to strategy creation on a rolling basis. They understand that this is not a one-time thing that you do every 10 years, right? But that this is an ongoing exercise. It's often those companies that have a dedicated board of directors. Um, those boards of directors have the longer term development of a company front and center. They are not involved in the day-to-day -day execution, um, but have the longer perspective and the long-term growth and well-being of a company in their minds. So what they do is on a yearly rolling basis, they would revisit the strategy at least once a year, sometimes even twice or three times a year, depending on where they are in the maturity process. And they would include additional stakeholders like um, C-suite executives, for example, the CEO or the managing directors of a company and um, would ask themselves, are we still on the right track in order to um, reach the vision that we defined for the next three, five years? Or are we kindly off track and need to adjust what we do. Smaller companies, entrepreneurs, often struggle with this concept because they're so close <laughs> down to earth to the operations yeah. <laughs> where their passion lies and um, in touch with their clients every day. And they are just so passionate about what they do that they sometimes forget that from time to time, they should take a step back and ask themselves, is this still the right thing? Am I running in the right direction? They might enjoy the moment but is this bringing them to where they want their business to be? Yeah. But there is no board of directors that can pull them out of the day-to-day. -day. So yeah. they really need to manage it themselves and lead themselves in the right way so that they don't forget to take that step back, to go into the helicopter perspective from time to time and ask themselves, 
while everything that I do is a lot of fun and I really love it, am I still on the right track or am I just enjoying going down the river and um, not seeing that there is a huge waterfall? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think this is typically the biggest mistake that I see for entrepreneurs and smaller companies that they don't understand how important strategy is and what it actually is. Yeah. They sometimes feel it's just a buzzword, something that's for the big companies. And I give you a little secret. Also, the big companies often really don't get their heads properly around the topic. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're not talking big companies here. We're talking smaller companies. So it's actually very simple to create a strategy. And you are actually really fast compared to the big companies. It's not a one-year exercise or anything like that. It's something you can just weave into your um, business on an ongoing basis takes you a few hours here a few hours there um, but it really gives you direction and helps you stay the course yeah so to to execute um, you need good leadership um, and that's on all the levels right um, and I think you, you can say leadership is not just knowing it's also doing it well so in in your mind what what, what how do you become a good leader in the context of strategy leadership is basically everything You can have the greatest strategy document on earth, a beautiful presentation, a wonderful document where you have all your thoughts down on paper. They make perfect sense. And then what? Yeah. You need to bring it to life. Putting strategy into action is only possible with extreme focus, passion, and dedication. And that's what leadership is all about. It's about taking a concept a vision of strategic framework and translating it into operations, into action yeah. and executing on it and doing something with it. Now, when you're a small company, this is actually fairly straightforward because your strategy is not kind of spinning across various business units and has a lot of corporate blah, blah in it that you first of all need to understand, right? It's often very down to earth, which makes it easier to implement, but still you need to do it. And leadership Let's, let's assume you are, you're an entrepreneur, you have a few employees, your company is fairly stable and successful. How do you help everyone in the organization understand what their role is in bringing this strategy to life? Yeah. A new strategy means change. Otherwise, it's not worth the paper it's written on. Yeah. So you need to help everyone understand how they are contributing to the bigger picture, how they are helping bring, uh, to bring the strategy to life. And what they need to do and learn and change in order to implement the strategy in a way that it actually helps you reach the vision. Yeah. This is super simple and easy for you as the entrepreneur, for you as the company owner, because you have designed it. You've thought it through various times from to end and back. And if you now start to communicate, please don't forget that some people hear it for the very first time and they will have a lot of questions. So rather than communicating strategy, just top down in one direction, open a dialogue with them. Be yeah. there, answer questions. Don't assume that you know it all because I promise you, you will have forgotten things. <laughs> forgotten things, this is just normal. And um, if you open the dialogue and listen and learn from what people tell you and what they actually ask you, You can learn a lot and just take it to the next stage. A strategic dialogue in an organization, no matter the size, is key to leading change to implementing a new strategy. Okay. So what about capabilities? Because again, right, you have all these leadership. Um, oh, yeah. You have the, the leaders, you have the you know, directors um, and different types of, of leadership but the skill set and the capabilities that you then need, that will, will also change, right? When you go in and make a strategy. So we need to talk about two different kinds of capabilities. There are, first of all, um, let's say subject matter expertise, the capabilities that you need in order to perform your job, yeah. hard skills, so-called hard skills, right? Um, how do you source? How do you sell those skills that make you successful in your specific area of expertise. The people that are the subject matter experts in your organization might need to learn new hard skills, might need to embrace different ways of, let's say, selling your products and services. 
if your strategy, for example, helps you um, become more of a service provider around the products that you deliver, um, then selling services will require a different skill set than just selling products. You need to help them to learn those skills. Yeah. Otherwise, they cannot perform as you want them to perform. And the only thing that you will reach is resistance and fear. Because if you don't help people get to the point that they are able, actually enable them to work as you want them to work in the future, then they will just be kind of paralyzed because they don't know what to do. They don't feel adequately equipped, so they will not move. They will stay where they are. If you want them to move, equip them with the skills that they need. And the second type of skills that we need to talk about are not hard skills, but soft skills. Um, now, I don't like them. To, I don't like to call them soft skills before, because they are actually some of the hardest skills to learn yeah. um, and to embrace. <laughs> misleading so. on, the, on the word, right? <laughs> totally misleading. <laughs> and I, I rather call them um, people skills or, or typical leadership skills. And um, I'm not talking about those skills in a, let's say, in a, in a vacuum, if that makes sense. You really need to link leadership skills to something. So in our case, in our discussion here, Sana, we're talking about strategy. So what are actually skills, leadership skills that help you design and implement strategy, which is the most important skill of a leader at all, because it formulates the future of the business, right? Yeah. So when we talk about those skills, um, of course, if you want to design and implement strategy, you need what we call strategic acumen. It's the ability to think and act strategically and this is totally different to what many leaders do on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. they lead a certain department they lead a certain number of people based on their expertise so if you are um if you're really good at sales at the beginning of your career all of a sudden you become a sales leader or later maybe even um broaden your scope and um, you become a marketing leader yeah but you not necessarily have the strategic acumen in order to help create the future of an organization. You're really good at marketing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it requires a certain skill set. It requires that you train a different muscle than you use every day. So if you use, if you're in the operations, you use your operations knowledge every day. That does not help you to create strategy. You need to be able to let go, step back disconnect yourself from your day-to-day -day job and think bigger picture so that's strategic acumen of course that's not the only skill that you need right? <laughs> we, we also need to be able for example to um, detach ourselves and that requires something i call selflessness now selflessness is not necessarily a capability it's more the level of maturity that you have as a person Leading means serving. It means helping others to thrive. Yeah. And in order to do that, you need to put them into the center of attention, not yourself. So this type of mindset and way of operating is what I call selflessness. So if you combine strategic acumen and selflessness, what you actually get is the ability to create the future for those you lead and serve, which is nothing else than a people-centered strategy, which is the best thing you can have. Yeah. If you have a strategy that is focused around profits, rethink your strategy. If you, if you focus on your people, they will focus on your business. They will, they will have the best intentions and the best knowledge um, to make your business profitable. So rather than just focusing on financial metrics in your strategy, really focus on what your people need and how you can best serve them. Talking about other skills in the context of strategy, certainly the abilities to communicate and to inspire, not only the people in the organization, but also, for example, investors. You might have people that you want, want to borrow money from in order to build your dream, right? Yeah. So being able to communicate and to inspire them and to help them see the picture that you paint for the future is also super important. When it comes to your people, the yeah, employees, there is no way you can make them move 
from where they are right now to where you want them to be without being able to inspire them to paint a picture that they want to be part of. Communication and inspiration are super important in that context. But also um, what I call the ability to collaborate. If you want to collaborate properly in an organization, it comes back kind of to selflessness. Yeah. If you, if you relate to other people in the organization in a way that um, you only reach out to them if you want something that serves your own purpose, it's probably falling back on your feet at some point in time. So really thinking left and right and having open eyes and open arms. Don't think silo. Don't think sales or operations or production or HR. You need to think broader than that. Having the best interest of the entire business in mind rather than just your own interest. So collaborating with others in order to achieve the best possible results is super important in this context of strategy. Otherwise, it will not be as successful as it can be. You might be successful, yes. It, it will bring you to, to here, right? So for yeah. those who hear that, um, I raised my hand to my nose right now, but you really want to go all the way up above your head. You want to really be successful. And that only works if you are truly collaborating. Okay. And I believe the final of those six uh, capabilities that I, that I wanted to mention is um, leading by intention. Um, really leading with the best mindset that you can probably have at any given day. And be aware that your best is not the best, the same best at any given day, right? Sometimes you just wake up with the wrong foot and your best on that day is definitely not as good as your best yesterday, maybe. Right? So it's okay so, to have a bad day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leading by intention means I have the best intentions in mind. I don't have a hidden agenda. I'm not looking at my own um, little corner of the sandbox only. I really lead with the intention to bring the best out of everyone involved. That's what I see as a great leader. Yeah. So how do you coach when, when, when your background? Because there's always um, the, you know, the change in the company. There's always some kind of resistance because it's difficult. If you ask somebody you need to change, that's not an easy part. We, we, are, yeah. we, are, we are wired as we're wired. Um, so what kind of conversations or what kind of advice do you give when a company has to go and through a transformation? I typically don't give advice because as an executive coach, I help them tap into their full potential. Um, but I tell them what I see and what I believe the company needs at any given point. And then I would help them understanding some frameworks that they could use in order to keep, to move the company through the change. So certain frameworks are super helpful in this context. Um, and they are well established. Um, I'm, I'm not talking secrets here. Um, change curves, Kubler Ross, for example, all those different models that are out there that help you understand the emotions that people go through um, when it comes to change. People are not stupid. People understand, rationally understand why you want to be somewhere else in the future than where you are right now. They realize that this is rationally, it makes sense. And still they don't move. So you need to ask yourself why. And here it comes to understanding us as human beings, a, a bit of psychology around that. We human beings are wired in a way that we save energy. We don't want to waste energy. We, don't, we only move if we have to, right? If our little um, iceberg is melting out there in the ocean, we will only realize it when it's basically too late. late. Because, yeah. hey, there is still enough space on this little iceberg, right? Yeah. There's still enough food around us. Um, understanding the need for change and being able to manage change is an important ingredient in any strategy process. And leaders in an organization that want to drive change, they can just use some of those um, frameworks that are out there. The eight steps, for example, by, by John Cotter, how do you create a cause for change? How do you help people understand the need for change? And um, we're not talking about strategy here anymore. We're basically talking about change tactics, yeah. um, how to approach it. And it's not that difficult. What's really difficult is 
<laughs> having the buy-in of the leadership team to actually do it. And that's yeah. the reason why I said earlier, I don't tell people what to do. I don't advise them in a sense that I consult them. I'm not kind of a strategy consultant like a Boston Consulting Group or a McKinsey that would come in and would produce a new strategy for you. What, what I do is I help under, uh, entrepreneurs and companies design their own strategy based on their knowledge and when they yeah. feel they need additional expert knowledge they would they would get it in they would ask consultants for that right but they create the strategy themselves the result is that they own it yeah. they don't refer it they, they don't refer to it as the insert well, name of the consultancy it, right? here strategy right <laughs> it's not it's not that's alex's strategy because yeah. it's super important the moment something goes wrong they yeah. need to own it yeah. If they then say, oh, I didn't, that, that was Alex's mistake, right? Yeah. Alex put that out there. Yeah. They lose the moment, yeah. and I lose at the same point. The moment they say, hmm, interesting, we did that with the best intentions. We realize it doesn't work that way. Let's go back to the drawing board and change direction here. That's totally fine because strategy is a living and breathing organism, right? Yeah. So taking ownership and then understanding what makes your people tick emotionally. This is, this is what you need in order to move the needle and to help people through the change. Help, um, help them understand what's in it for them. Help them embrace it emotionally and rationally. The rational piece is not the difficult one. The emotional piece, emotional. the acceptance of change, yeah. Yeah. that is the difficult piece. And you can only reach them on, on, through emotions. We are human beings. We are just totally irrational most of the time. So <laughs> approach it through the emotions and you will be more successful. So, yeah, and I think what you're just mentioning with ownership, that's also on any kind of project that you have. If you don't have totally. the right people, right? And the ownership there, um, it can fail. So the better you can show that, yeah. Um, what, is, what about culture? Because we're touching it a little bit because people and culture. Um, so culture is the way people behave within an organization. So is strategy and culture connected and does the strategy process shape a company culture? I actually believe there is no better way to shape a company's culture than through a rigorous strategy process. And the reason I say that is a good strategy process does not only focus on strategy, it also touches the elements that sit around strategy. When you talk strategy, the first question that you should ask is why? Purpose, impact. Why do we do what we do? And why do we want to be where we want to be? What is the unique issue out there in the world that we address, right? Yeah. So we, we need to talk deeper than just profit. We need to talk profit and purpose. We need to talk intent, purpose, and impact, right? So those things are connected. And you can do that through a strategy process. Now, understanding your why and linking it to your values as well, as well as a company already touches people. Um, if I go into a workspace every day and my personal purpose resonates with my company's purpose, I'm in the right place. Yeah. It just unfolds so much motivation and, and energy. It's super important to understand that. And if I then also understand how I and my role contribute to the bigger picture, this is the connection between um, culture and strategy. And culture is what happens when no one watches, right? So if you have leaders in place that lead the company with an iron grip that are super <laughs> micromanagers, you will not create the strat uh, culture that is open um, to, to change and is open to um, new strategic imperatives. Um, you want to lead in a different way. You want to create a workspace where people show up because they want to, not because you want them to. There's a huge difference in it. Yeah. And you can, you can just distill all these elements from purpose to vision, to mission, to strategy, to um, behavioral guidelines, all these things are connected to a strategy process. And if you do it the right way, your strategy process becomes the perfect vehicle to create corporate culture. Because in the end, people um, want to be part of something that is larger than life. They want to know why they need to do things the way you ask them to do. And if they understand how, how they show up every day, how they treat their clients every day, how they treat each other every day, 
contributes to the bigger picture, they, they will just do it because it's the right thing to do. They understand that if you as a company want to make a profit, which is totally clear, you need to pay your bills. Um, and at the same time, make sure that you don't suck the life out of the people uh, in your company or um, the people that work for you up and down the supply chain, or that you're not the biggest polluter on earth, that you treat the environment respectfully. Yeah. It, just, it, it just feels great to work in that company. It, it, it's, it goes way beyond just getting a paycheck at the end of the month. And that's what you want. You want to have the right talent in your organization and you want to keep that talent. So a strategy process is the perfect vehicle to shape culture, to shape a performance oriented culture where people show up um, and do the right things and do good while they also do well. Yeah. So when you go through the, the exercise of your values, the mission, and you're saying why, is there, um, is there a way where you say you should always start doing the values first or, or is there no recipe? Is it better to jump in and you do uh, a whole <laughs> big meeting on, on hearing everybody's voice to it? Or it, what it really it? comes down to where your organization is in terms of maturity level. Yeah. If you are a company that has grown for several years and has a whole bunch of new employees um, and you're now starting a new strategy cycle, you see the opportunity to just get some things straight that might have been around for some time, but have not been developed further or adjusted to your growth and so on. So um, depending on, on what you have right now, start just start there. There is no cookie cutter recipe for that. Um, it always depends on where an organization stands, um, what the maturity level is, where they are in their growth process. process. Um, if you start with the strategy process as such, the rest will pop up. I can promise you that it will <laughs> pop up, and um, then you just tackle it when it when it when it just is uh, front and center and lies on the table. Yeah. Okay. Um, time travel, because we can always say, "Oh, yeah, look back." I right? can say, "Oh, yes, yeah, sh I should have done that," or "If I knew that." Um, yeah. But looking into to the future, um, what will you tell yourself in ten years? What do you think you will tell yourself? <laughs> What I will tell myself in 10 yeah. years, I hope I tell myself becoming an entrepreneur was the best decision of your life because I, my background is 15 years in strategy, but in completely different settings. Um, I worked, first of all, after university, I worked um, as a strategy manager for a large corporation. Um, then I became a management consultant, an employee. Um, again, and um, yeah, then I started to build um, companies that were not owned by myself. Now, for two years, I've been a fully self-employed entrepreneur, and I really hope I tell myself in 10 years that this was the best decision of my life. <laughs> and, and working on your strategy as well. <laughs> totally. I mean, I revisit my own uh, strategy every second month yeah. because I'm in a very strong growth stage right now, and I need to strongly focus my resources onto the right things to reach my strategic goals. And when I talk strategy, I really talk 12 months because I'm a solopreneur. I have my own company. Everyone I work with are um, basically suppliers. So I pull in um, people with the right knowledge at the right point in time because I understand what, my, what, what the best investment of my own time is. I know what my core strengths are and I, want, I strongly believe in, in strengths orientation. So I only do what I do best and for things that others do better than I do, I pull in other people. So this is a high, a high energy environment right now, and it's easy to lose track. So for me, revisiting my own strategy every two months is strong, strongly recommended. <laughs> Good. What about, uh, so in the beginning, right, I introduced you, you're saying you're an author. So tell me about, sure. you know, yeah, let's hear more <laughs> about that. Um, I started to write a book last year and I actually finished it last year. Um, the book is about what I call the nine elements of organizational identity. And it basically describes a framework and a step-by-step -step process, how you use an intentional strategy process to bring more than just a new strategy to life. So all the elements we touched from purpose to mission to values, um, it's really important to understand those terms in the right context, in a strategic context, not in a nice to have fluffy context, beautiful words on the walls and the corridors. No. How do you use values 
for success? How do you bring your purpose to life and still have a profitable business? How do you balance those elements, right? Um, and based on the past 15 years, I, I pulled together some best practices that I believe help you um, create an impact and a good profit as a company. Um, I've, I've um, put those frameworks and steps into practice with my clients um, and they see the value in it. They see how their business benefits from it, how the people in the business benefit from it. And I, I decided to write down the book basically when I, when I left Europe um, two years, one and a half years ago. And a friend of mine said, Alex, I see you struggle with the decision. I was like, yeah, it doesn't feel good to leave my clients behind in Europe. I feel a very strong connection to them. And he was jokingly saying, what about handing them a little present? Um, and what he, he didn't mean a bottle of wine, right? <laughs> he meant something with more substance to it. And um, so I said, okay, um, let me think about it. And then I thought I could write a little booklet summarizing concepts and frameworks that yeah. we used in our pro projects with them. And it turned into a full-blown book. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of having worked with some great minds on this, on this book. And we're right now in the process of... Um, raising it to the next level in terms of depth and um, consistency you know you cannot just write that sit down and write a book and be like you yeah, have never written a book but hey it will be fine no it will not be fine it will be a nightmare i <laughs> promise you it was a nightmare for me so i'm currently partnering with uh, people that actually yeah. are really great at um, distilling the essence out of the chapters and so on so um the book was, is already signed by a literary agency, um, which is a really important step in order to get it published. Yeah. Um, but we're not under pressure. Um, so I would say if we're, if we're following through on, on our current um, ideas, the book will likely be published in the beginning of 2022. Awesome. I will look out for it. You have to send me a link when it's ready. Oh, I, I will. <laughs> yeah, I will. Ideally, you just go to my website, alexthestrategist.com and sign up for um, for my news. It's a newsletter that goes out every second week, which yeah. is um, not a sales newsletter. So I don't try to sell you stuff there. It's really about adding value. I add, um, I, I tell you about free resources on my website, toolkits, checklists, everything that you can use as an entrepreneur or a business out there without paying for it. I'm, I'm not a strong believer in uh, having a newsletter or a website in order to sell stuff. I believe in adding value to people. And if they see the value, they will always come back to you. They'll come back. It's all about the educational and sharing it. Thank you so much. Um, this was a great chat. I loved it a lot. I learned more about strategy. I knew some, but I know more now. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Sana. Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, maybe you'd like to hear more. Please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure also to check out our website, mindtheinnovation.com. And remember, stay curious, keep learning.